going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I've got a small modification to do to the 2000 Pontiac Trans Am W6 right here behind me. And it's going to be like a, a kind of tried and true F-body modification or LS motor uh, modification. Anyways, it's the throttle body coolant bypass. Now, on these cars from the factory, they do run coolant or they circulate coolant through the throttle body. The intent is to keep it from icing up. Now on a car like this, you're probably not going to be driving it much in the winter months or when it gets cold or salty out or anything like that, so a lot of people just delete it. It's a pretty inexpensive mod, but my question was if it actually works. So we're going to do a kind of a uh, kind of dirtbag scientific study on this. So right now in northern Minnesota, we have our calibrated temperature source, or temperature probe here. It's showing just below 50 degrees, like 49. My truck said 45 on the way home, and the method we're going to use to measure the throttle body before and after, after a long drive, is this little thermal heat gun. It's a couple degrees off, as you'll probably see. We got right at 50. Okay, so right now it's showing within like a degree of each other. I'll pop the hood. We're going to measure the throttle body case's temperature. We're going to take those measurements, I'll record them, and we're going to see if we actually render any good results from this, or if that 10, 15 bucks even does anything. Thing. A little bit of snowfall bad for a car? I don't know. It's just a car. I'll probably get some comments about it, but it's not going to melt. <laughs> and we're rolling. So, we're off and rolling right now. We've got about 24 miles to hit the town and come back. Uh, we'll take a measurement when we park in the town. It's about 12 miles and another 12 back for a total of 24. We're going to stay at highway speed the whole time. Not going to do anything crazy. Just let the car do what it does. And we're going to see what kind of temps we get. I'm thinking it's going to be colder after the throttle body delete, but we'll see. Makes sense that it would be, but how much? I don't really know. So until then, I guess, maybe enjoy the driving montage. It's full-on autumn up here, and uh, yeah, everything's turning really pretty. These are nice colors. A couple more weeks, it'll be pretty crazy, but right now it looks pretty good, too. So we'll see you when we get to the town. Looks like it's over one, uh, 180, I guess it would be. It's got a 160 degree thermostat, just so everyone's made aware of that. May influence the results a little bit, but to what degree, I'm not really sure. Have a lot of heat coming out of the vents already. I'm gonna suspect that the temp will be pretty close to operating temp by the time we're up there. Obviously the car won't be totally heat soaked like a two hour highway drive or something like that or driving around town really slow for a long time, but just as far as the test goes, I think this might be a pretty good a pretty good uh, way to do it. As far as being like a dirtbag scientist about it. Uh, I suspect when we get back, the temps will be somewhere 150, 160 on the throttle body if I just had to guess. Wrong. You know, with the coolant running through it, this is total speculation right now. I, I really don't know. But I'm thinking if we can show that if we do a second trip and it's cooler than the first, even if we didn't drive very much, I think it's going to be a good way to show that these do work and that maybe how well they work. We can get like a percentage of temperature loss at whatever 40 degrees or 49 degrees it is right now. So we're almost at the town. I'll take another couple measurements as soon as I can and uh, we'll turn around and head back and install the parts. should only take 5-10 minutes and we'll make another lap. Alright, so we made it to the first stop. This will be where we turn around, and there's where we are on the temperature gauge, just for future reference. Like 180, 190 maybe. I'll go outside and take measurements, and we will see. As 
exactly what we got. We got the thermal gun. There you go, right at 40 degrees. 43, so let's drop a little, 42.7. So we're real close, it looks like 41. 68, it's getting a little bit warmer. 74 there. On the coolant line, it's 100. So all the way down there, right on the line, 100 degrees. All right, so we got another 12 miles to go back and uh, take our second measurements. Got to circulate the coolant a little bit. <laughs> and uh, we'll take our measurements. We'll be back again after we're done. We'll see if we actually lose a little bit of temp on those two parts. I'm, I'm wondering if we didn't drive long enough to not actually heat soak the throttle body with the coolant because the higher you got on it, the colder the throttle body got. So I don't think it quite radiated into there yet. So we'll have to see. I'll be interested to, uh, to see what the results are and we'll see you back at the house. We're back in the garage and here's a quick look. Uh, no time has really passed. Still sitting, there's a shadow, but it's it's right at 41 degrees it looks like. Here's our little reference point, 54. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy. I don't know if it warmed up a little bit because this was in the car and that wasn't. I couldn't tell you, but that is reading higher. This is before too much time passes. 83 is a solid reading there. On the other side, where we've been measuring it, there are about 110 on the end of that. Uh, I'll check out the water pump quick so you can see that temp has climbed significantly. We're right around 130, just under it, 129. So, I'll get the parts out. Uh, it should be a real quick install. This is from Pot Speed and Performance, an LSX bypass kit, and what you get in it is this barbed fitting right here. There it is. Barbed fitting and a couple of worm gear clamps. I'll get that out and we'll take a look at it. It's a Pot Speed Performance LSX Bypass Kit and you get one brass barbed fitting. It's gonna couple those two hoses together that I pointed out earlier in the video. And we got two worm gear clamps right there. It also came with clear color instructions which are very nice. Half the time you get stuff that comes with nothing. This is in color. It's <laughs> He really, uh, the guy that runs it, Pot Speed, he was awesome. He helped me out with my black camera that I had earlier on the channel. Highly recommended company to work with. Super affordable parts. And uh, best way to actually buy stuff from him is on eBay. Um, trusted buyer, really popular in the LSX community. Most known for porting and polishing throttle bodies. But they do offer other products. So if you're interested in something like this, check them out. They offer a good product at a cheap price. And uh, we're just going to find out now if the uh, tried and true product is worth it. All we're gonna end up doing is just, I'm gonna take off the lid here probably just for ease of installation. Uh, take off the bellow and everything. And it should just take a couple of minutes to hook those up together. Uh, be really careful when it's warm. It says right in the instructions to do this when it's cool because you might get doused with coolant. So we'll take our chance here. Other thing I'm gonna do, I've got little rubber vacuum caps. I'm just gonna cover the coolant lines, or the coolant ports they would be on the throttle body when I'm all done. I think it gives a little bit cleaner look if you actually do see it. And if anyone wants to hook it up, it's not gonna be full of dirt or crap or anything. So, we'll switch to a time lapse. I'll get set up on the tripod, and we're gonna hook this up quick, and we'll turn around and get back out of town. Cause I know that you do just
right, so uh, my hand got out of the way and I just wrapped it up kind of off camera. So you can see a little rubber cap. You can set the light down in a good spot. Oh, you don't even need it. Little rubber caps right here. There's one of them that's on top of one of the coolant ports. I got a little zip tie around it to keep it from maybe sliding off. I did fasten the hose on top of the upper radiator hose with a tie wrap as well as a couple around the vacuum port that's on the bottom down here too, which I also put a little rubber cap on. There is space down there anyways. It's not gonna rub it unless one of those let go, then it might rub on it, so I'll have to keep an eye on it. But other than that, it's a super simple install. Uh, nothing I wouldn't be afraid to take on in my garage. This is the second time I've done it. Uh, alternatively, if I, if I had to do it a different way, I'd buy a whole chunk of rubber line and I just replace all of it and run it behind the throttle body or something like that. It's probably a little bit better way to do it. But anyway, just a little trickle of coolant. My bucket under there didn't catch any of it. So I'll clean up real quick and we'll do another lap. And I guess we'll just see you back in the car. All right, off we go. Sounds okay. All right, back on the highway. I'll get down into fifth gear here. I was in fifth gear last time the whole way, so we'll go about 60, 65 miles an hour. And we'll have to see what the result is when we get there. I believe the last drive we did do a full heat cycle as far as the engine's coolant temperature goes. Uh, the, the coolant temp climbed to around 200, and I watched it drop off dramatically, and it's filling right back around 160, 180. I'd have to guess it's a dummy gauge, so you gotta take it for what it's worth. It's pointed in the same spot though on the way back to the sound as it was to the garage. So I think this will be a good test to see if it actually makes a difference as far as the throttle body temp goes. We know that the coolant was flowing through it. There's a lot that came out. So since we left the garage, we basically just bypassed the coolant heating system in the throttle body. Now, the temperatures were, uh, they were up a little bit when we got back. Uh, they weren't quite exactly what the water pump temp was, but maybe that's to be expected, I don't know. So we've probably got another 10 miles or so to go on the highway. We'll park, measure real quick, and uh, we'll turn around and head back. All right, we're back, so 41 degrees. 47, let's see what it goes down to. 45.441. Yeah, about right there. Sixty-nine and a half. Lastly, we got the water pump here. Oh, 119. The caller 119. And as always, dead on, 41 degrees. I bet you this will be high again, being we're inside. Hey, look at that. 52, car 52.1. It's like 10 degrees higher inside, which is kind of interesting. Uh, must have something to do with the ambient air temperature changing its, its reference point, so. All right, we'll take our readings real quick. Um, start in the same spot, right in the corner. See if we get a good reading. Call it 71 point, th uh, I moved, sorry. 71, I call it 72. Well, 72 degrees there. It seemed to be the hot spot last time. 71 and 84.7. Lastly, the control temperature of the water pump, which is hot, as you'd expect, 123.2. So what did we find out? We found out that the throttle body coolant bypass modification does work. Now, this might be kind of hard to read, so I'll do a super quick explanation of it. I took two temperatures on each side of the throttle body after driving it in these intervals. So I did the cold test, which is like a control. It was 50 degrees, which was the same as the body panel. It was the same as everything else. 
Uh, I drove 12 miles. The average of two sides of the throttle body was 70.5 degrees. We turned around, drove home, warmed up of course. We had an average of 96 degrees. We stopped, took maybe 20 minutes. We bypassed the throttle body, drove another 12 miles, and that rendered 62.35 degrees, which is an 8.15 degree difference since the first run. We drove back home. The average temp was 73.35 degrees on two measurements on the throttle body, and that's 16.6 degrees less than the previous run home, where you would expect it to be the most heat soaked. Now, I drove another 45 minutes, and you'll see here that the average after I got home was 82.1, and that's with mixed driving as far as, you know, starting, stopping, highway, turn the car on, turn the car off, idling, the whole thing. It's just as though you were driving. I didn't beat on it. I didn't do anything crazy to uh, try and make it hotter. I just drove it nicely. That is 13.9 degrees cooler yet than the highest run, which was with the throttle body hoses all connected and the coolant circulating through the throttle body. So, overall, you can see that it makes a big difference. Now, is this the most scientific way to do it? Probably not, but I don't know of a, a better way to do it without having any data logging software, any way to actually monitor intake air temperature. So this is kind of the dirtbag way to do it. What I found is that it does work. Now for $10, you got to remember that what it's doing is lowering the temperature of the throttle body itself. Uh, you could say as much as, you know, I would say it'll be as much as 20 degrees, I would bet. If I would have drove further, it would have been stop and go traffic. I bet the difference would be more dramatic. Now, this is on a 40 degree day, so whatever effect that might have on it, if it's exacerbating the effect or making it less dramatic, I don't really know. I'm not a scientist, but... At any rate, that's how much it cools a throttle body. Not the intake air temp, but the throttle body itself, so you could infer that the intake air temp is going to be cooler. Similarly, I don't know. It probably does have a dramatic effect on it, though I'd be really interested to see what the air temp is actually before and after. Back to back, same day, same temp, same everything, same car, same route, and um, maybe you'd see some difference. If you are interested in the exact kit that I used, it seems to be good. I don't think it makes a difference. It's just one brass barbed fitting as well as a uh, two little worm gear clamps. I want to say it's like a $10 or $15 kit from who I bought it from a few years ago. You can check out their Facebook page. It's Pot Speed and Performance. Um, like I said earlier in the video, they do sell everything that they have on eBay. I'm not sure if they have a website now. They're really good to work with. They're really knowledgeable and the prices are the same as anywhere. So I'd recommend them. A lot of people in LS1 Tech do. And uh, that's about it. Nothing crazy. Super easy install. Anyone can do it. You can do it while the car is hot if you really want. You can do it while it's cold. And you're going to see lower throttle body temps. So it works. <laughs> but anyways, if you're new to the channel, and uh, a lot of you are, since the last time I uploaded anything about the Trans Am, uh, the channel's almost like doubled in size. There's almost 1,500 subscribers now, and we've also been remonetized, which is awesome. So any money that's coming from the channel is going right back into it. Um, like I said, if you're new to the channel, welcome to it. All the returning subscribers, thanks for checking it out. It really kind of keeps it going. It's hard to, to be competitive, I guess, as far as uh, uploading stuff on YouTube goes because there's so much of it out there and it kind of falls to the bottom if it's not really a big video. But if you like what you saw, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, come back for more. Drop a comment or questions or criticize it. Uh, I don't know if anybody's done a video like this before, so it might be kind of the first one you could do. Like... Uh, to actually verify that, yeah, it does a does have a pretty significant change on the throttle body temp. Maybe it's not. Maybe I might have missed it. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and take care. And I guess we'll see you next time.